Hi, this is Sahana. In our today's session, we are going to learn how can we optimize data access using asynchronous programming. Let us begin with understanding what is asynchronous programming. It's a style of programming that allows user to do multiple tasks at the same time by starting multiple processes. In synchronous programming, set of tasks follow a sequence. I understand that this is a little confusing. We shall understand it with an example. This is our ASP.NET Core MVC web application. Here is the project structure. If you want to go through previous videos, you can visit my channel. There you will find ASP.NET Core MVC playlist. You will find all the videos. In this application, we are using SQL Server as database and also we have set up entity framework code. This is our application. When I click on this drop down, we get a list of tutorials. We are fetching this data from database. Again, when I click on any of these tutorials, we display the list of articles. Again, this article data is stored in database and we are fetching from database. Here you can find the folder repository. If you expand this folder, here you can find interface I tutorial repository and more interface I article repository. This tutorial repository class implements I tutorial repository interface and article repository class implements I article repository interface. This is the place where we are actually talking to the database. Here we have implemented dependency injection. In this case, dependency is database. So we are injecting tutorial DB context because tutorial DB context knows database details. If I want to fetch all the tutorial details, I will call index action methods from tutorial controller. This method will return all the tutorials available in the database. Inside tutorial controller, we have index action method and we are calling get all tutorial method to fetch data from database. Go inside this method. This is inside iTutorial repository and tutorial repository class is implementing this repository. Here we have get all tutorial method. Here, see, if you look at this method, we are fetching data from database, but this is working synchronously. Let's understand what happens with synchronous operations. Let's understand this with an example. Let's say we get a request to fetch all the tutorial details from a database. In that case, application will assign a thread to handle this request. In synchronous programming, even if next request arrives, thread will not handle that request until this request has been completed. Even if fetching data from database takes some time, thread will not handle another request. It will wait for that request to complete. Asynchronous programming best suits while working with database. Even in asynchronous programming, whenever there is a request, application assigns thread to handle that request. While fetching data from database, if there is another request, asynchronous programming utilizes that waiting period. How will it utilize that waiting period? It will go ahead and start handling that second request. When database finishes its processing, again it will go back to the first request and saw that request. This is how in asynchronous programming, thread is able to switch between the requests. It is not that application will have single thread. Application will have multiple thread, but this is how asynchronous programming works. To make the asynchronous programming concept simple, I have, take, I have taken example of single thread with two requests. In asynchronous programming, async and await keywords play important role. Best thing about Entity Framework Core is it supports asynchronous programming and it's very simple. To turn this method into asynchronous method, first I will change this to to list async. Here we have to list async, but we are getting error. Now we should change the return type. It should be async task. Now this is not enough. To turn this method into async method, we should make it await. This method is ready. Now we should go back to tutorial controller and we should change the return type of this index action method to async task i action result. This is not enough. Again, while calling this method, we should use await keyword. We are getting error. The reason is we did not modify iTutorial repository. If you look at the method signature, it is not matching with what we are using. So we should change the method signature to 
task i enumerable tutorial and stop this application and let's come back to tutorial repository c now we are not getting any error now we have converted our synchronous method to asynchronous method understand the flow let's convert this get tutorial method to asynchronous method this is synchronous method here we are finding tutorial with the help of id what this is synchronous version we have asynchronous version for this find method it's very simple again we have to append async keyword now now this is async method it should be await we are returning tutorial return type should be task let's go back to i tutorial repository and change this method signature we should make it task tutorial can you guess why we are still getting error we have done small mistake the return type should be async task now we are not getting error we find from where it has been called we are calling this method from three places first place is we are calling this from edit tutorial action method this is get method next is edit tutorial action method this is post method and one more method that is get tutorial now we should change these methods to asynchronous method first step change the return type from i action result to async task i action result then while calling this get tutorial use await keyword now again do the same thing for this action method the return type should be async task i action result while calling this method use await keyword again we are going to repeat the same thing to this method Call, while calling this method we will use await keyword i hope the things are clear see you soon in the next video mm -hmm.